and so so they're set for life in in that mould, really. Well, yes, obviously it depends on on their own particular genetic predisposition and how much mercury that, that they get. But but yes, the, you know the, these children are coming out. Mm -hmm. and there's a whole raft of science there about sort of birth defects and neurological defects uh, caused to the newborn from mercury. Mm -hmm. And you get more mercury from amalgam than any other source, and that's according to the World Health Organization. Well, for them to say that, I'm absolutely amazed. I have to admit. Uh, there was a question there, obligation to return gold, is, is this uh, the way it should be? Well again, a, an excellent question. The gold crown belongs to the patient, so when a d dentist removes it, he is under a, a legal obligation to return that property to the patient. It belongs to the patient. Unless of course he wants to go skiing. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, our, our texters do, do have a, a good turn of phrase, it has to be said. And there was a mention there about mercury-generated diseases. For a particular example, there was MS, multiple sclerosis. So is there a link? Is it provable? There's, it's been, there's been speculation between mercury uh, and MS uh, for a long time. And we have had MS patients ourselves whose symptoms have disappeared from removal of their mercury fillings. We've also had patients where it hasn't happen. Mm -hmm. But there is a, an undisputable link between mercury and neurological uh, diseases in, in general. But mm -hmm. a lot depends on how long they've had the symptoms. Right. You know, if, it's, if they're very early into it, then they have a stand a much better chance of recovery than if someone, say, had had the disease for 20, 30 years. So when you say neurological diseases, what, what are the sort of um, uh, top of the marquee in terms of what we're talking about now? Alzheimer's. Right. Autism. Yeah. Uh, they're, they're, they're probably the, the biggest and, uh, and hot, hottest topics at the moment. You know, mm -hmm. then you have things like Parkinson's, motor neuron disease. All these things have been connected uh, with mercury. And again, the research is there to back this up, I take it? Yes, that doesn't mean there's an absolute causal link. You have the mercury and yeah. you are bound to get Parkinson's. It doesn't work that way. And it doesn't mm -hmm. mean there aren't other causes to Parkinson's either, such as, say, some pesticide exposures and things. Mm -hmm. But certainly mer mercury is there. It, it's high in the box. And um, one of the topics which always keeps uh, uh, coming our way on the edge in one form or another, fluoride. So, as <laughs> dentists, what is your opinion of fluoride? Do you want to say anything? No, you can do it. Well, the, the, the fluoride is as bad as mercury. It's a total and absolute nonsense. There's just no science out there that says it, says it worked. Mm -hmm. The only way fluoride prevents tooth decay is because it poisons the bacteria when it's painted on around the teeth. So you right. can get, get the same effect with arsenic. Oh, right, yeah, that it sounds safe. Yes. It, it uh, makes as much sense to put fluoride in the water as it yeah. does to say to drink sunblock and then go out in the sun. I think you'd be protected from the sun. And in fact, I'm going to back this up. The CDC have got um, two papers they published in uh, 1999 and 2001 uh -huh. saying that fluoride in the water was utterly ineffective. So it, it just doesn't work. It's a total nonsense. Yeah, because it was, I think there's something about uh, two cities in Canada. Uh, one had uh, fluoride added, the other didn't have fluoride added, and yet that one which had no fluoride added, uh, the standard of um, the teeth in that area was higher than in the fluoride area. Yeah, there's a few studies um, come out of that, but there hasn't actually been any scientific study to prove either the safety of fluoride or its effectiveness. Goodness so, me. Yeah, in, in all these years. So I'm sure there are quite a few dentists out there who are probably shivering a little bit to know that their patients who have watched on the edge tonight are going to be going in going, will you stop giving me fluoride? Well, it's up to the patients to demand that they're not being yeah. poisoned. I mean, it is it's an enzyme poison. And 50% of the fluoride you take in is going to stay with you till the day you die. It's a mm -hmm. cumulative poison. It's also a neurotoxic, but it's mm -hmm. basic fact it, it does alter your enzymes and, and, and the bone structures. I can imagine there's some people who will say, oh, well, that's it then. I, I've had fluoride all my life. I'm, I'm as good as toast. I might as well keep having it. Well, individual choice, really, isn't it? You know, but mm. then again, fluoride does affect um, uh, the, the, the uh, intelligence quotient of people, too. So maybe if they've had it long enough, they might think that way. Yeah. <laughs> so, so literally, it, it does dumb people down, is what you're saying? Uh, oh yes, there's, there's plenty of studies out of China to say the effect of, of long-term fluoride is to, re to reduce intelligence, yes. Mm -hmm. Same for mercury too, of course. Yeah. Mercury reduces intelligence as well. And I know some Especially of dentists, yeah. I might have. Mm. But, but right. the problem is really with the water fluoridation is that when you add 
the fluoride to the water, how do you know what dosage people are getting? When you, within medicine or dentistry, look at dosage, you, you want mm -hmm. to specify, well, you need so and so much, mm -hmm. and this amount will be good for you, and higher than that would be poisonous for mm -hmm. you, will not be, be, be good for you. But of course, with water and the fluoride together, you don't know. Yeah. You might be drinking one glass of water a day, I might be drinking 10 glasses of water. Mm -hmm. And what about our children? If you do mm -hmm. bottled water, uh, or you use bottles and you use tap water with fluoridated water for a small baby, then the mm -hmm. amount of mercury that this per or, or the amount of fluoride, sorry, that this child is going to ingest mm -hmm. is, is much too high, really. So that is the problem that you don't know what dose they're actually getting. And um, this is one of the intriguing things we constantly use the phrase here on, on the edge of willful ignorance. Um, people will be familiar. I think, with pictures of fluorosis, where there has been too much fluoride in the diet, and it actually has an effect on the teeth, and it actually discolours them. So you, you've actually got a visible example there to demonstrate to people all is not what it seems with fluoride. Well, yeah, in America, 40% of school children uh, now have, have fluorosis due to the, the, the build-up of, of, uh, of fluoride. If they get it in toothpaste, of course, they get it in drinks. And mm -hmm. if, it's, if, fluoridated, if fluoridated water is used to irrigate crops, it's concentrated in the crops, it's concentrated in the, in the vegetables and things that they eat. So mm -hmm. it, there is a massive amount of fluoride going into the present population. And that triggers in my head, uh, there's part in your book that you talk about... Um, the way uh, vitamin and mineral values in fruit and vegetable have, have decayed. I mean, you, you gave, I think, an example from 1976 to the modern day. Uh, huge percentage reductions in, in the value of, of fruit and veg in terms of the vitamins and minerals they get. Well, yes, this is um, courtesy of uh, modern farming methods. The soils are depleted. Mm -hmm. So even if you eat organic, you're not necessarily... Mm -hmm. um, getting the amount of, of, uh, of vitamins and minerals um, mm -hmm. that, that you should be getting. And what the previous generations got, it's, it's, it's impossible to, to, to receive a, a balanced diet almost today without, without taking supplementation because that's of the right. soil exhaustion. And that's, that's a worldwide phenomenon. It's not, mm -hmm. not just in the UK. It's worldwide. So in, a, in other words, trying to grow more crops on the same land over a short period of time uh, has actually re reduced the food value. Yes. yes. Goodness me. Goodness me. Now, you, we, we mentioned all around the world. We've got about half a minute. So what sort of places have you actually gone to sort of talk about uh, what you've discovered? Oh, well, we, we've, talk, we've, we've talked everywhere. I mm. mean, I've just come back from, uh, from, from Nairobi, Kenya, a fortnight ago. We've done that. We, you know, Canada, all around the States, mm -hmm. in, in, you know, around Europe. Not very much in, in the UK. We're not sort of asked to speak much in, in, the, in the UK. But, but, you know...